Today I'm excited to share with you a Christmas message. And I just love Christmas, don't you? I love everything about it. The music and the food, the lights and the decorations, the trees. I love the shopping and the gifts and the anticipation of the fun moments and the memories. I love getting to see family and friends that I don't get to see all the time. And I really love to give gifts. You know, I'm one of those people that enjoys picking out a gift and really hoping that it's the very thing that the person wants. And then, you know, of course, I love to receive gifts as well. And if you're here today and you're one of those people who acts like you don't like to get them, oh, come on, get over it. Getting gifts is a big part of the fun, right? I love the Christmas movies. How many of you love Christmas movies? And I know sometimes they can be a little bit silly, but I love them. What's your favorite? How many of you would say it's a wonderful life? Maybe Elf? Home Alone? Miracle on 34th Street? Ladies, maybe it's serendipity or night after night of all of those awesome Hallmark Christmas movies. What about Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase and Clark Griswold? Some of you are Clark Griswold fans and some of you are living with him. Today I want to share a classic with you if you'll just take a look at the screens. There it is, the holy grail of Christmas gifts, the Red Ryder 200-shot range model air rifle. Ralphie, what would you like for Christmas? Horrified, I heard myself blurt it out. I want an official Red Ryder carbon action 200-shot range model air rifle. What I want for Christmas is a Red Ryder BB gun with a compass and a stock and this thing which tells time. Wow, that's great. A Red Ryder BB gun with a compass in the stock. And this thing which tells time. No. Shoot your eye out. Oh, no. It was the classic mother BB gun block. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> oh, no. You'll shoot your eye out? <sighs> My mother must have gotten the Miss Shields. There could be no other explanation. You'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. No! <laughs> That's a classic, right? Every time I see that movie, I want to buy a BB gun and just shoot all of the adults. Why? Because they make me embarrassed to be an adult. You see, there's a running theme in these movies. The kids are always all wide-eyed, excited, full of life and anticipation, full of joy and hope. And the adults are all stressed out and cynical and not fun and super negative. They're what I like to call fun crushers. What is a fun crusher? It's exactly what it says. It is the crusher of the fun. It's the person who has to be the one to tell you why it can't happen, why you shouldn't have it, why you never will have it, and why it's impossible that it will ever be. See, Christmas time is a time where we're reminded about the opposite way when we watch kids. And that's why I love kids. You see, they're so full of life. They're so full of hope. And they live for the good. They live for the fun. So today I want to talk to you about being a little less mature this Christmas and being a whole lot more like a child. You know, Jesus loved kids and kids loved him. 
One day he was teaching, and in Matthew, we read an encounter that he has. He's teaching, and as he teaches, a group of kids try to come to him. And the disciples or the fun crushers that day take it upon themselves to tell the kids that they're not welcome. They say, you know what, he doesn't have time for you. He's here to deal with more serious things. He's here to pray for people with real problems. If you brought your Bibles today, you can go with me to Matthew 19. I'm going to read you a bit of this story. In verse 13, it says, Then little children were brought to him, that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from them. I like the way it reads in the Message Bible. It says the disciples shooed them off, but Jesus intervened. He said, let the children alone. Don't prevent them from coming to me. God's kingdom is made up of people like these. Was Jesus saying that God's kingdom is literally only made up of little kids? No, that's not the point he was trying to convey. What Jesus was saying is that God's kingdom, the people who enjoy a life with God and living in the kingdom of God are people who have the attitude of a child, who have a childlike trust in him. In Matthew 18, we read of another encounter, and in this one, Jesus actually picks up a child. I'll begin reading to you out of verse 1. It says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. As adults, we all understand that it's our job to teach children. And while children learn from us all the time, I believe that there are things that we can learn from them as well. And Christmas is a good time of year for us to get our childlike trust back, to grow up, And be childlike, not childish, but childlike, childlike in our trust, in our hope, in our anticipation, and in our joy. You see, this Christmas, I want to be childlike. I want to be childlike in my dependence upon God. I want to be childlike in my hope Childlike in my gratitude and thanksgiving for what he has done in my life. This Christmas, I want to be childlike in my love and childlike in my wonder of my God. Childlike in my worship. Childlike in my joy and in my trust in him. Church family, this morning, I would say to you that we can learn a lot from kids at Christmas. Have you ever noticed how kids have this fantastic ability to just live right in the right now? Just in the right now. They're not stressed out about tomorrow. They haven't learned to worry about that yet. They're not all stressed out or focused or thinking about what did or didn't happen yesterday. They're just living in the moment. I love this phrase. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe you haven't. It says, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. You see, every single day is a gift from God. Every single moment that we are alive is a gift from God. And it's a gift that we should embrace and focus on and not ignore. I remind you today that God's word says, for this is the day that he has made. 
let us rejoice and be glad in it. Have you ever watched kids open gifts at Christmas? If you haven't, then you need to borrow some this year and watch them. They're so much fun. It's like the moment you say go, they just go at it. They rip those gifts open. They attack them. They don't stop and say, oh, mommy, would you prefer that I just very gently open this and set the tape and the paper aside so that you can reuse the ribbon? Maybe you have kids like that. I don't. They just go at it. And honestly, I think that that's the right thing to do. They attack it because they're so excited. So the first lesson that we learn from kids at Christmas is this. Kids don't focus on worries. They just embrace and go after what's in front of them. You see, I believe that God wants us to attack each day. Each day is a gift that he gives us and he wants us to go after it, to focus on what's in front of us. He wants us to focus on the day that he has made for us. I encourage you this Christmas to determine to attack each day, looking for what God has placed inside it for you. Looking for moments, looking for encounters, looking for open doors. You see, he creates those days specifically for you, and inside them is something for you to experience. Have you ever played the big box to little box trick? Or maybe you've seen it done, especially with a kid, you know, where you have the big package and then inside it is another package and inside that's another package, and you gotta keep opening it until you get to the actual gift. It's a lot of fun with kids. It's like the, as they go and they go from package to package, the anticipation continues to build. And they get more and more excited and they're just kind of squealing because they can't wait. They're like, come on, let's go. You see, I think that God gives each day to us as a gift. And in some ways, I think it's like the big box to little box analogy. You see, he gives you the present, which is today. And then he goes, here it is. And we open it and we go, oh, wait a second, there's nothing in there for me. It's just another box. You know, another meeting, another long day, another stress, another thing to worry about, another bad experience. And God is going, hey, come on, keep going. Here it is, keep going. God's watching and he's like, come on, keep going. Remember, this is the day that I made for you. I've given this day to you. And if you will just keep unwrapping, there's a moment inside there for you. Have you ever as a parent planned something really special for your kid? And you know, you're all hyped up and you're organizing it and it's a big deal. You've been talking about it for days. And the time finally comes and you've got them dressed and you've got them in the car and you've got the bottle and the blankets and the entertainment and the bags and the snacks and all the just in case. And you're on your way and you're pumped and ready. And then all of a sudden you pull up and you're like, hey, we're here. And boom, they're asleep. And right then begins that tug of war. Like, do I wake them up? Because we've been planning this. I mean, this is a big deal. Do I wake them up? Oh, but if I wake them up, what am I going to wake up? Is it going to be the nice one or the naughty one? I would say to you this morning, don't fall asleep. Don't give up. Keep pushing on. 
Keep unwrapping the gifts. Don't leave them unwrapped. Keep looking, keep seeking, keep going. Because maybe, just maybe, if you do, inside your day is a God moment. Maybe, just maybe, there's a God encounter. Maybe, just maybe, there's a new job. Maybe there's a new relationship. Maybe, just maybe, if you will press forward to the mark that God is calling you. The answer is waiting for you. Keep going. Don't fall asleep. Amen. Look, some of us don't see the gifts that God gives us. We don't ever see them. Why? Because we're too busy looking at the next day, worrying about the next day. Or we're too busy looking at the gifts that he gave someone else that we wanted. And all the while, God is saying, hey, pay attention. I've got this. This is the day that I made for you. I know what I'm doing. Look, don't pay attention to what others have or what others do. Place your eyes on the gifts that God has given to you. Live in the moment. Live in the right now. Matthew 6 verse 34 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. You know, so many people don't have enough strength or energy for the moment in front of them. Why? Because they've taken a whole lot of their strength and energy and they've placed it into yesterday. They're focused on what did or didn't happen yesterday and then whatever is less they've taken left, they've taken and they've placed it into tomorrow. And so then there's nothing left for today. There's nothing left for the moment that God has placed right in front of you. And this morning I would like to remind you That the Bible says to cast all of your cares upon him. Your cares of yesterday and your cares of tomorrow. Cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. I like to say it this way. Hey, just quit worrying about it all. Give it to him because God has got your back. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. The next thing we learn from kids at Christmas is to soak up the moment. To really soak it up and experience the moment. Are you good at recognizing the moments? Are you good at recognizing the moments that may never come again? Are you good at recognizing the moments that God has given you and then being thankful for those moments? Are you good at recognizing and remembering, oh, hey, I need to pay attention. This is one of those things. You know, the day that I got married, we were standing right behind those doors, and it was my mom and my dad and I. And right before we walked into the auditorium, my mom turned to me. And she said to me, hey, I know you're probably nervous and you've got a whole lot of things running through your mind. She said, but Shannon, pay attention. Pay attention and experience these moments because you will never have them again. And I will never forget when I walked through those doors with my parents and the people who were here stood and started to cheer as Siobhan sang. And I'm so thankful that she said that to me, that she prompted me to pay attention. Because little did I know that it would be one of the very last things, big things that I would do with my mom. This morning, I would encourage you, don't be afraid to say, oh my. Don't hesitate to say, wow. Don't miss the oh my God moments in your life. Don't miss them. You know, one of the things I love about my little girl, Emery, is that she just gets so excited 
about doing things. I mean, she gets just as excited about coming to the office or going to Albertsons as she does Disneyland. She loves it. And last week, I took her to Disneyland. And at one point, we were walking from one ride to the next, and she pulled on my hand. And she said, Mommy, I just want to stay here forever and ever. She was having an oh my God moment, and she was paying attention. You know, if you're not careful, if you're not careful, the devil has a funny way of shifting our focus away from the oh my God moments. He likes to get us focused on things that are so not important. When I was studying this message, I was remembering a night when I was growing up. You know, every year we would put up our Christmas tree. Some of you knew my mom well and some of you not so well. But for those of you that did or didn't, she was a type A perfectionist. So when I say we were putting up the Christmas tree, what that really means is that she and Jared and I were sitting on the couch. And my dad was on a ladder putting the tree up while she ordered him around. A little to the left. No, not that much to the left. A little to the right. Oh, wait, a little bit higher. A little bit lower. Nope, nope, now they're too close. Charles, the lights are not looking right. And one year as we all sat there, I'll never forget my dad finally turned to her and he goes, seriously, Rochelle, it's a Christmas tree and the kids can't even touch it. Don't let the devil do that to you this Christmas. Why is it so important to pay attention to the oh my God moments? Because if you don't, it can lead to regret. One day you look back and you'll you'll be filled with regret and it'll be something that you can't get back. Don't let the devil do that to you this holiday season. Don't let him steal your joy. Amen? You know, when Mary became the mother of Jesus. She was a child herself. She was a young teenager chosen by God to carry the Messiah. And when, when she was asked to do this, you know, I ask you to remember that this was not an easy thing. It was a tough thing. Being chosen to be Mary wasn't just some easy deal. There was a lot of risk and a lot of things and a lot of danger that surrounded her. So I'm sure that she was thinking a lot. And the night that she had the baby, she's in in the barn and, and the shepherds come. And as the shepherds come, they begin to declare things about the child, the, the prophecies of who the child is. And in Luke 2.19, it says, but Mary kept all these things. And pondered them in her heart. You see, Mary knew that she was experiencing a moment. And she didn't want to miss it. The third thing that we learn from kids at Christmas is to celebrate and have some fun. Yes, I said fun. All the fun crushers just got real uncomfortable. You know, what I love about kids is that no matter what's going on, no matter what toys they have or tools they have or options they have, they make fun. They have fun. In fact, they create it. You know, kids can have as much fun with a fancy big toy as they can with a piece of paper. There's so much to learn from that. You see, kids are not afraid to use their imagination. They're not afraid to dream or to suppose or to believe in the possibility of something. You know, this last week at my dad's wedding, Emery was sitting with me at the table and she was getting pretty antsy. And it was kind of a fancy thing, you know, and after a couple of hours of trying to be fancy as they tried to feed her sea bass, she's three, She's like, Mommy, I'm just a bit bored. I'm like, I know. Come on, we can do this. 
And all of a sudden, she spotted this very fancy glass on the table. It was a tall glass, and it was filled with sparkling cider. And she said, what's in that glass? I said, would you like to taste it? Yes. So I gave her a little sip of it. And she goes, mommy, that's good. I said, well, that's a pretty fancy bubble drink, isn't it? And she said, yes, I think I need some more. And then I gave her another sip. And I said, do you like it? She says, mommy, I need to drink more because this drink is just turning me into Princess Holly. I said, what? She says, the more I drink, the more I'm becoming Princess Holly. You see, she was creating her own fun. God has given you the ability to create. You see, the God we serve is the most creative being that has ever existed. And you, my friend, are created in his image. Therefore, you have the ability to create. And that ability does not go away when you become an adult. We are all creative beings. So even when circumstances are not perfect, you have the ability to create. You have the ability to create moments of joy and moments of love and moments of gratitude and moments of fun. You know, kids, or my kids at least, they just love to sing and dance. I love it when they come in here during praise and worship and they're just running around because it's a way that they celebrate. I want to read to you a passage out of Luke. You know, in Luke 1, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary. And he begins to tell her that God has chosen her to be the mother of the promised Messiah. And he shares with her what is about to happen. And I remind you again that this is no easy thing that she is being told to do. Her life in that very moment is now at risk. And I love her response in Luke 1. It says she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she sang out exuberantly. I'm bursting with good news. I am dancing the song of my Savior, God. God took one look at me and look what happened. I am the most fortunate woman on earth. My soul magnifies the Lord. I've got to sing. I've got to dance. What a lesson on attitude and perspective, amen? What happens to us adults? Life is hard and it gets to us. And before you know it, we become all serious and boring. We lose our imagination. We lose our joy and our sense of gratitude. We lose our hope and our ability to see the possibility. We lose our desire to sing, and to dance. I would like to share another clip with you right now. Wow, what's this? This is the North Pole. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Where's the snow? Why are you smiling like that? I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Make work your favorite. That's your favorite, okay? Okay. Work is your new favorite. Fine. You are very good at decorating that tree. Why are you messing with me? Did Krampa put you up to this? I'm not messing with you. It's just nice to meet another human who shares my affinity for elf culture. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through the holidays. Get through? Christmas is the greatest day in the whole wide world! Please stop talking to me. Uh-oh. Sounds like someone needs to sing a Christmas carol. No way. Best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Thanks, but I don't sing. Oh, it's easy. It's just like talking. Except louder and longer and you move your voice up and down. I can sing, but I just choose not to sing. Especially in front of other people. Well, if you sing alone, you can sing in front of other people. There's no difference. Actually, there's a big difference. No, th no there isn't. Wait. I'm singing! 
I'm in a store and I'm singing. I'm in a store and I'm singing. Hey! There's no singing in the North Pole. Yes, there is. No, it's not. We sing all the time. No, it's not. Especially when we make toys. This Christmas, I encourage you to sing a little, to dance a little, to have some fun. This Christmas, instead of complaining, rejoice. This Christmas, instead of being down and sad, rejoice. Make it a point to have a little fun. Make up your mind to not be a fun crusher. Take some time to experience the oh my God moments this holiday season. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And I know that there's some of you who are here today that the holiday season is a tough time. Maybe somebody that you love is not here Maybe the desires of your heart don't seem possible for some reason. And I would just remind you today that Nehemiah 8.10 says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you feel alone this holiday season, then run to your God. If you feel down or weak, then run to his word. If you need strength this holiday season, then come to the house of God because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Amen? This Christmas church family, let's remember the reason that we celebrate. Let's remember the true meaning of Christmas. You see, if you're here today and you have said yes to Jesus, then you are a child of God, a joint heir to his promise. And if you've said yes, then you have a hope. And you should abound in joy. If you are a child of God, then you have every reason to rejoice and you should choose to rejoice. You see, he has given us a gift. And if we open it, then we will know Jesus. And if we choose to attack that gift, to really rip it open, to go after it with full force and full energy and full strength, then we will experience a life that is so great and so grand. We will experience the abundant life. John 1 verse 12 says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. You see, God desires for you to embrace the gift that he has given you so that you can be his child. He desires for you to embrace his gift of grace and his gift of forgiveness and his gift of restoration so that you can experience the fullness of the abundant life. And if you will do that, then this Christmas you have reason to live. He has given you reason to love and to hope. He has given you reason to dream and to be happy. If you will believe in him, then you have reason to enjoy good days full of good memories. If you will believe in him, then you have reason to dream and believe in the possibilities and to expect for good things to happen. And I'll close with this today. If you're here this morning and you're a child of God, then you have this guarantee. Number one, you have a seat in heaven for eternity. And number two, you have the ability to live the abundant life all the days of your life here on earth. My prayer for each of you this Christmas and this upcoming year is that you would embrace the grace of God that you would embrace the hope of God and that you would rip into each day knowing that this
this is the day that he has made for you. Now come on, get up and let's rejoice. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Listen, before you go, I want to pray over you. Are you glad you came to church today? Father, today I just declare the blessings of God over each person that is here today and this Christmas season, I declare that they are blessed coming in and blessed going out, that they are the head and not the tail above and never beneath. Today, I declare that everything that they set their hand to do shall prosper. And that as they go forth this holiday season and into the upcoming year, that you go before them, that you prepare the way for them, that you open doors that no man can shut, that your divine favor and grace rules and reigns in everything that they do. In Jesus' name, amen.